And welcome to 520 Sports Talk. We are here at Wings Over Broadway on the southeast corner of Camino Seco and Broadway, just down the street from the rival Saguaro Cougar campus. But we don't have them on tonight. We have the Sabino Sabercats, and you know why. It's Championship May, and they are the 3A state champions in softball. So we're really, really honored to have them with us tonight. Let's go through a few of our sponsors here, because without them, obviously, 520 Sports Talk would not exist. Dynamic Comfort Air Conditioning and Heating, where your comfort is our only concern. Call them at 520-323-0008. Sparkle Cleaners with 11 le- convenient locations around the Tucson metro area to serve you. Now offering home and business pickup of your laundry and dry cleaning. You can't get any easier than that. Throw it in a bag, throw it on the front porch, go online, schedule your appointment to pick it up. They'll clean it professionally and return it back to you. Uh, very, very quickly. You can go to sparklecleaners.com to set up that appointment. Frog and Furkin, if you were with us last night, we had a fabulous show, 60 people plus at Frog and Furkin for the FC Tucson 04 Black State Championship soft, or soccer team, which is now going to Boise, Idaho for the regionals. Uh, check out uh, their post on the 520 Sports Talk page on their GoFundMe. Help these kids out because they're not only representing Tucson, they're representing the whole state, and they want to be West, at least Western Regional Champions, if not more. Frog and Furkin located in University Main Gate Square. Something always going on at the Frog, whether it's the 520 Sports Talk show, karaoke, trivia, live music, and, of course, sports all day, all night, seven days a week. Wings over Broadway, like you said, this is the best place in Tucson for Wings. And in case you don't know, this is the only location now. They closed the Broadway location over by the Williams Center because they're going to clear the land to build a shopping center, apparently. So um, this is a better location anyways because you can watch sports and drink beer. And they have pizza and burgers at this location where they did not at the other one, right at the corner of Camino Seco and Broadway behind the McDonald's. Bianchi's, two convenient locations on the by the west campus of Pima at Speedway and Silverbell, and up north where we do our Oro Valley and Marana High Schools at Tangerine and Thornydale. Serving the area since 1975, great, authentic, homemade, original Italian cuisine. Johnny Gibson's Downtown Market. This is where our show Under the Stars is in the back patio between Johnny Gibson's and High Wire Lounge. We'll be having a show Uh, Very quickly, I believe the Tucson Youth Football Jaguars are going to be scheduling a show there very quickly. Great place for a show. Uh, Johnny Gibson stays open till midnight. It's the only market downtown. And they have great burgers, sandwiches, and ready-to-eat food all waiting for you. Meech's on South 4th Avenue. I live in Marana. Believe me, it's worth the drive to go to Meech's on South 4th Avenue in South Tucson. The best Mexican food serving the area since 1976. And Arizona Native Landscaping, design, installation, and maintenance, ArizonaNativeLandscaping.com or their Facebook page, Arizona Native Landscaping. So we'll get with the rest of the sponsors in a little bit. We've got a couple new sponsors we want to tell you about. But before that, we're going to have the Sabino High School Championship Coaches. Coaches, go ahead and uh, introduce yourselves to the viewers. My name is Chris Stainer, and I am the head softball coach. I'm Vanessa Arandules, assistant. All right, great. Well, glad, glad you're here. Congratulations. Obviously, you're in order. Um, tell us what it feels like to, I mean, it, it, does it feel different to be a, a player of a state champion or a coach of a state champion? I don't know, because uh, we took second at state when I was in high school, so I don't know what that feels like. But uh, it's a pretty amazing opportunity for the kids. It was it was a fun night. It was a great tournament. Well, it was a long journey. Uh, you had some stiff competition. You had to go... You had to knock the Sarita Mustangs off their defending state champion. They were going for two in a row. And you had a quite a quite a, uh, array of teams from the Phoenix area that you had to get past. So uh, job well done. Uh, Coach, tell me, going into the season, you knew who you had coming back. Um, you knew which uh, JV kids were going to move up to, to varsity. What, you know, what went through your mind? Did you think, hey, this is our year, do we have a shot? Or what exactly was your mindset? Well, I think we all kind of, and, and I say we all, our, our entire coaching staff uh, looked at talent for the last couple of years, and we knew we had some some physical talent there. Um, I think with any team, it's about chemistry, it's about work ethic, it's about playing for the team and not for your individual um, sure. accomplishments, I guess. 
And so that's always a challenge with any team you face. And so our big thing going into it was really focusing on what can we do for the team first, but how does that impact you as a player? So yes, it was something we talked about, but I don't like to necessarily focus on the end. Sure, sure. But you there. thought you, you, you in your back of your mind, sure. you're not, you, we got a chance to take this. Physically, yes. I mean, last year, mm-hmm. you know, should have had it. Baseball guys got screwed basically by the AI, and I will say that the AI screwed them, <laughs> along with their basketball team this year. Are you listening, AIA? Um, Sabino, when I was in school, was a three A school. That was the highest A. A. There was, you know, there's triples. And then it just seemed the demographics changed in the northeast part of Tucson. One, take a Verde open, so that drew some of the population out sure. from Sabino. And the, the generally the, the area is, is more older now. The people that live there, the kids are already graduated and gone, and they're adults now. So um, you're still 3A, but you're 3A in a 6A state. Right. So you're kind of right in the middle. It's got to be a little bit more difficult because I know I went to a small school. It's called Push Ridge now, but it was called sure. Palo Verde Christian when I went. And we had to play multiple sports because, just because of the there wasn't enough kids to – to go out so i played football basketball and baseball so is do you find that the same in in sabino do the girls play other sports other than softball you know not so much there's a few there's a few and obviously we encourage that i mean having been a coach for 26 years Mm -hmm. i I do think there's some exceptional crossover skills that you get from other sports i also think that it's mentally a great reset button for the kids to be able to check out of one sport, get into another one sure. strategy, learn from a different coaching style. I think there's so many advantages to that. I do think that down here in Arizona, the travel ball scene is so uh, focused yes. that it is basically year-round, and with the exception of spring ball for high school. Right. So a lot of times, the last couple of years since the AIA lifted the rules, we've been trying to instill a fall ball program just mm-hmm. to help those kids who aren't in other sports. Sure work on their skills, work on strength and conditioning, all that stuff in the off season, um, to kind of give them a leg up for to, to maybe bridge the gap between the 12 travel ball kid and the kid who maybe can't do travel ball because sure. of other reasons. And, and, and travel ball, I mean, well, just, just face it, it's expensive. It is. You know, and some sure. parents can't, can't you know, Absolutely. foot the bill. So, I mean, it's, and that's unfortunate because the one who suffers is not the parent, it's the child sure. as far as getting development. Um, travel ball to me is, as well as any other club sport, volleyball, basketball, you know, you're trying to get a scholarship. Yep. You, you know, it's more of what can I do as Exposure. an individual, Yeah. Yep. less of a team mantra, so to speak. High school ball, you're playing for what's right here across your chest. It's Sabino, you know, that's... You know, to me, I would rather win a state championship than a high-profile club tournament. But you know, everybody's different. But yeah. uh, no. you know, you I, can't I take agree. a state. You cannot take a state a... championship away. When you when you got that Justin's ring on your finger and you just kind of <laughs> wiggle it when you're over here at the you're over here at the QT and there's like five Saguaro people over there. You just like so no. so. Travel ball is a double-edged sword because it does refine skills and it gives them exposure, but. Yes, it, it is sometimes more important with the high school to be similar to a college. It's all right. about winning for the team. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, what was your toughest game? I mean, you played to Rose Mofford, you got to play at Farrington. Uh, what you know, a lot of times the championship is not the toughest game. Right. Um, it just depends on what who you draw and where the seedings are. You may have to play like the Sarita. You may have to play the defending champs. You know, not in the semis. You might have to play them early if somebody upsets somebody else. Well, one thing is, the last couple of years, we've really focused on our early season games, the tournaments we choose to go to. We want to play the best in the four, five, and six, eight teams. We want to be challenged early on because in our 3A, although there are some tough schools to play, like an Empire, a mm-hmm. Sarita, those types of schools, um, there are some that aren't as tough right. and and no diss to them at all but i want my kids prepared 
for that one nothing ball game. Sure. And so we really worked on um, early on getting them into some of those competitive games in the what, what do you call them friendly here non conference. And I know games. CDL always has that big tournament yep. out at Freedom Park, and yep. so that's a great tournament. Yep. Um, the nice thing about travel ball is you can take a three A player and plug it in right next to right next to a six A player, and there's no difference. Right. Yeah. It doesn't matter the number before the A. It's just that six A's got more of a student population to draw from. They may have. 10 more good players right. than you do, but your players are every bit as good as a 6-18. Right. and it forces them to step up to compete with them. Mm -hmm. So I think that was huge, having some of those close games early on. As we got into the tournament, I mean, they were all very well-coached teams, yes. very prepared. I would say River Valley was probably our toughest yeah, River challenge. Valley. Now, where are they from? <laughs> Don't say Arizona. <laughs> no, River Valley is in our in our state, but yeah. I, I don't know where it's at. I, I apologize. It sounds like it's like on, uh, up north or something. It, it doesn't is. sound like a Phoenix school. Is. Yeah. And um, it was a one nothing ball game. Until yeah. Like yeah. So it was a it was a great competition. Exactly. I mean, I got to watch the Ironwood Ridge win. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought Benson was going to three peat. They were up uh, six to yeah. two going in the top of the seventh, and you know the dam busted loose. Katie Sherman got rocked and. You know, eight runs later, Camp, Camp Verde is the champion. And, sure. you know, they that's just a, that's just why you play to the last out, you know. Exactly. You know, they could have just folded in the top of the seventh and was like, well, you know, we lost. But uh, those kids battled, and uh, you never know what's going to happen, you know. Right. Bounce right. here, a bounce there, an error here, an error there. So um, what a great feeling, though. I mean, to play, you know, your, Rose Mofford's a great complex up in Phoenix, but to be able to play in Farrington, oh, yeah. Or Hill and Brant, or you know those those big college stadiums, you know that's got to be uh, you know that's something that the kids I think are gonna remember their whole lives. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Two years ago we played a quarterfinal game at the U of A. At Hill and Brant. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It was awesome. It was. It was. And I had it, to get there early to get my own nerves out because I was so starstruck over. Yeah, and I think South Point I got yeah. to play in the new Hill and Brant this year. Nice. So. Good for so uh, yeah. So. And we're looking forward to this weekend also, just a quick plug, uh, U of A, Old Miss, oh, yeah. and the Super Regionals, uh, Taryn Mowat, the U of A star pitcher uh, from about 10 years ago, also was the pitching coach at Old Miss before she came back home to Arizona. So good backstory, and Super Regionals, I mean, if you're there, you're good. So there's no bad teams in the Supers, so we'll see what happens. So what's going to go on next year? You're losing some people, obviously, as you do every year. Uh, you've got a good core coming back. You've got a, got a lot of good juniors. Um, do you have a JV team, or does it, they just practice with the varsity? Yeah, we have a JV team. A lot of them could play both okay. because we, my mindset is it's a feeder program. Sure. And so we had them practice together so they'd be challenged by some of the varsity sure. starters. I felt like... They grew more as players by practicing side by side with our starting lineup. Um, I would say a good chunk of them will, will move up. Um, you know, we won't know about freshmen until obviously August when right. school starts. But um, I think we have a good core coming back. I mean, between our juniors and our sophomores and our standout I mean, we had a solid group. Freshman group our freshmen, sophomores, everybody, you know. Our seniors, I'm not taking anything from them. They are phenomenal kids, very talented. They're going to go on to college careers and do an exceptional job. But I do feel the championship is about a whole team. Right. And it isn't just one or two players. It was our freshmen, sophomores, juniors were making some crazy plays defensively, offensively, as one through nine could hit. Well, I, mean, I saw the Push Ridge game because I was at the other field watching the, oh, the yeah? Sarita, and I popped back and forth. So, yeah. you know, that was uh, that was a really well-played game. Got to talk to Jay. Okay. Jay, we love you. You know that, buddy. <laughs> I always got to give a plug to Jay. Jay's a great administrator. administrator. Yes. He was a great football coach, a great AD. And, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. that Sabino does have top to bottom. Boys and girls yes. sports are always competitive in TUSD in the 3A division because of the fact that you know he and the other coaches and you guys put so much time and effort into your kids and, yeah, it, we have and it really shows it support. really shows yeah. Ryan McBrayer Sly Lewis I mean I can't wait for football to start. <laughs> I'm a football player so I love covering Sabino 
uh, to watch the Sly and, and, and Ryan uh, do their magic because the, uh, the football Sabercats are, are very, very fun to watch. So do you kind of just, you know, school's getting out tomorrow. Uh, do you kind of just kind of give the kids your blessing and, okay, go to your club team, kind of keep in touch with us, or, or do, you, do you constantly stay in touch with them during the club season? I think it's kind of hard to keep in touch with them because most of them travel. We don't coach. I don't coach clubs. So. All right. Plus, they scatter to different teams. And yeah. So, I mean. So, you're giving them your blessing them, and much. see you in the fall? We see, <laughs> we see the ones that come back. And okay. The ones that don't come back, wish them well. A lot of them okay. are out to college ball. So sure. We expect great things, whether we hear from them or not. But most of the time, I feel like they would. They would message us if anything right. and just and I think check they in know on that if they need us for anything, yeah. if they have a question or mm-hmm. anything, we're always there for them. Sure, you know, sure. Whether they're still at Sabino or they're off to college or Well, whatnot. I mean, once you're a Sabre Cat, you're always a Sabre exactly. Cat. So yep. there is so much talent in Southern Arizona in softball. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. I mean, not this year, but last year, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, and 5A, all 520 area code softball champions. Awesome. You know, and... You know, that translates into club uh, and all sports. Like like the soccer team I had on last night, they had to go and beat the best of the Phoenix teams to win the state championship. So so it's just it's a, there's a lot of a lot of talent, and it seems like girls are drawn more to softball now than any other sport, more than volleyball, you know, and, and, and some of the other, more than track and field, more than soccer. So that's, a, that's kind of a good thing. You know, it gives you more to choose from, and it gives more kids a chance to, you know, to show off their talents and to, and to grow athletically. Let me get your take on this because I have my own opinion. I think when you're in club, you need to play up. If you're a 12-year-old, you need to play 14 or 16 U um, because you're not going to get any – you're not going to sit there. How good are you going to be when you're batting 600 in, the, in your own age group? I mean, that's not helping you. Just as a loss will teach you more than a win. Yes. You know, when you lose, it's like this is why we lose. We have to fix this mistake, this mistake, a couple of mental errors here and here. And a win is like, yeah, we run ruled them, we kick their butts, and we'll, you know, get it out of your head, and we'll go on to the next game. So to me, it's a lot like sprint versus marathon. Right. You know, if you want to be good for a short period of time and get the accolades, then play in your age group. Right. Bat six hundred, get the MVP, that yeah. nice little medal, but that's yeah. gonna last a year. Yeah, and when you're a senior, and no co- college uh, exactly. college comes looking for you, and their parents are like, well, they're bad at six hundred. Well, they're playing in a low league, you know. So parents on club teams. Have your kids play up. You know they may only bat 200 or 225, but the next year they're gonna they're gonna get used to the speed and they're going to to excel. And then in the tournaments that they have to play in their age group, it's gonna seem slow to them. Yes. So. And, and it challenges them to a point where it te- teaches them growth. Right. Not just physically, but mentally right. as well. Right. And they have to get along with the older girls, you know. Yes. And when you're or when you're a tweener, you're 12, you know, and stuff like that, and you're playing with 15, 16 years old that are midway through their teen years, you know, there's a there's a little bit of an adjustment to make, but it's it's a positive adjustment, you know, for the kids. That it's like, hey, I'm playing with my older sister, and she's 16, you know. So um, it's just, parents, please, you know, you've got a state championship coaching staff here. Play up. Play your kids up. You know, and play them outside of town. You know, it's like... I, you know, I mean, competition in Tucson is good, but go to Phoenix, go to Las Cruces, go to San Diego, go to Vegas, play out of town. That's the only chance your kid's going to have to make a college scholarship is to play in other cities. So, all right, so I want to thank you, coaches, for laying the foundation. Once again, congratulations on a job thank well you, done. And uh, we'll bring the girls up here, and uh, we'll see what's up and how they feel about being state champs. All right, thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're changing up. We're going to go through some more sponsors here. Uh-huh. Catalina Auto Recycling. This guy is fabulous. I talked to him. He's not only a sponsor, but he's a good friend, and he's also the father of my producer, uh, Doug Sturdivant, Catalina Auto Recycling. You realize every car runs on used parts. Now, they're only new and when they're in the showroom and you've never started the car. Once you've driven a mile, your, your parts are used. You might as well save some money. Why buy new when used will do? I just got an engine for my 350Z, and that car is fast, fast, fast. I mean, it runs good. It runs like it's just off the showroom, and the cost difference between buying something new and buying used is phenomenally different. So please check out catalinaautorecycling.com.
Arizona Lending Specialist. Contact Mo, the mortgage lady, at 520-510-6698. Mo does the calligraphy for our players of the game throughout the year, whether it's softball, basketball, football. So definitely check her out because she will definitely – Cuts your mortgage rate a half to 1% over the Novas, over the Sun Streets, the big corporate mortgage companies. She will definitely save you money. Jim Miller State Farm. Jim Miller, one of my buddies, takes care of by uh, Dave Rubio, University of Arizona soccer uh, matchups, so I can write stories. Thank you, Jim. He's located up in my neck of the woods in Marana in Continental Ranch at, at Wade and Silverbell. You'll see a red VW outside of his office. So go bug him for a quote. He's your one-stop shop for auto, life, home, and renter's insurance. Tuller Trophy, two convenient locations to serve you at 6th Street and 6th Avenue and the 5700 block of East 22nd. Tomorrow, today's Tuesday? Today's Wednesday. Tomorrow night, we will be out in Vail. I'm going to meet him halfway, Miss Katie Sherman, pitcher for the Benson Bobcats, through three perfect games in April and combined with Emily Darwin on two other no-hitters. You can't be it better than that, and that's why she's our play, our softball player of the year. Congratulations, Katie. We will see you tomorrow. Chiba Hut. You guys ever had Chiba Hut? It's the best sandwiches in the world. Forget Subway and you know and, and uh, where you know uh, Fast and Furious or whatever you call it, <laughs> Jimmy John's and you know Firehouse. Uh, Firehouse. It's, Gar- pure garbage, all right? Check out Chiba Hut. It's right across the street from the sand volleyball pits of the U of A, just down from the football stadium on 6th Street. Nothing is fried except for the occasional customer. And you'll see why, because there's like 9,000 stoners in there. So, at the, <laughs> But they have cool things like Kool-Aid, Tang. You guys don't know about Tang, but Tang was popular when we were a kid. Tang is what the astronauts used to drink before they went to the moon. So, and they have the greatest subs in the world, believe me. So, check out Chiba Hut, 1840 6th Street. First Heritage Realty, the A to B team with Brittany Palma. Looking for a house, condo, townhouse, or just land? Move the healthy way by calling her at 520 270 7958. And we will check out the rest of our sponsors in a little while. Ladies, seniors, well, you're only a senior for one more day, huh? Then you turn back into freshmen. <laughs> That's kind of funny the way that works, huh? Okay, thank you so much for coming. It's my honor to have you. I mean, this is really, it's an honor for me. I love the month of May because we call it Championship May. We only have state champions on our show all through May. So we're going to have the Ironwood Ridge kids on. uh, We'll probably have to move them to June, but uh, we appreciate you coming. Uh, So why don't we start with you. Give us your name, uh, what position you play, and and they're all seniors, but they only have one more day of school left. um, I'm Riley Carley, and I play third base. All right. I'm Hannah Stark. You got your own mics. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm Hannah Stark, and I'm a pitcher and outfielder. Okay. I'm Cassie Castaneda, and I'm a catcher. Right on. Okay. So, I mean, the obvious question, what does it feel like to be a state champion? Now that it's sunk in, I'm going to ask you later on what you thought in the moment, but what does it feel like to be a state champion a week or so now that you've had time to let it absorb? It kind of feels unreal, honestly. It doesn't even feel like it happened in a way, but, like, I'm glad it did, but it just doesn't feel like we actually did it. You know what I mean? Sure. It's just a shocker. All right. It feels really good, actually. I bet. I'm a state champion, so I know. Yeah, it feels pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, it feels really good. It's surreal because, um, yeah. Did you guys get your Jocelyn rings uh, fitted yet? Yeah, yeah we just we're Joe Grassi. Joe, we love you. Joe's actually, <laughs> actually, I'm getting my state championship ring back. It got my apartment got broken into like 20 years ago, and my class ring, my my state champion basketball ring, got stolen. So he's actually recreating my ring, so it's going to be very special for me. So, so let me ask you this: You're not you and Swar are the big two high schools on the east side. So you play each other in every single sport. It's always pride of the east side. Santa Rita, Santa Rita shouldn't even be a school. There's like three people that go there. <laughs> but, but, but there's a big rivalry, okay? You're in Saguaro country right now. They're just up the street, okay? But this is a great place. So say you got your championship ring from Jostens and Joe Grassi, and you're over next door at the Quick Mart, and some Cougar softball player walks in. Are you going to go? Heck yeah. Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> Talk a little smack. Heck yeah. All right. That's the nice thing about being a state champion, and especially being in Tucson. You know, even though there's a million people here, it's still kind of a small city. 
And you're going to see these people, whether it's in club ball later on, or even when you're in your 20s or 30s, you know, you'll still be popping your ring on. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, remember? You know, and believe me, when you get older, the legends get bigger, you know. <laughs> I hit six home runs in one game. You know, you didn't. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me, I was asking the coaches this. That a lot of times the championship game is not the hardest game that you've played during the whole tournament. You know, a lot of those Rose Mofford games are a lot harder than they, when you get to Farrington. So what was, you know, and, and you guys may have different opinions, but what do you think in each of your opinion was the hardest game that you thought, wow, we we may lose this and then our season's done. What was the hardest game? That you actually won, but you know there was a struggle. Like in um, the playoffs. I, or yeah, in the playoff. Yeah. I definitely think like River Valley. Like That's what your coach that said. One, okay. Like, yeah, I think that was our hardest competitor. I think so. Okay. And, like we went hard and we did what we were supposed to do, but it was definitely nerve wracking at the beginning. So. Okay. Same. Yeah, I'd say River, River Valley. Valley. Yeah. River okay, Valley. so that's what your coach said too, because when it's one and done, you know, there's a lot of pressure. Because especially as seniors, it's like, man, I'm never going to put this uniform on again. You know, whether you're a football player, softball player, or whatever, there comes that time, and, and you've now experienced because you're state champions, you will never wear a Sabino uniform again. And it's kind of bittersweet to really it is, you know, because of all the good memories you have, of all the good relationships that you, you know, created with your teammates and your friends at school. Um, it's, it's sad in a way. But it's kind of a new beginning, you know. Now you're going to go into college and stuff. So, so let me ask you this: Are you, uh, do you guys all plan on playing uh, softball at the next level in college? Yes. Okay. So, being seniors, tell me who's looking at you and what schools you may be considering. Um, well, we all signed already to our colleges. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to be attending New Mexico State. Okay, in Las Cruces. Yes. Good chili over there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Southern Oregon University. Okay, and where is that? I don't say Southern Oregon. <laughs> it's in Ashland. Ashland, okay. Right. I'm going to the University of North Dakota. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Bison? Um, the Fighting Hawks. Fighting Hawks. Yeah. Bison must be something. Uh, they're our rival. They want to go to state. Okay. Yeah. Got my you got my uh, mascots mixed up. <laughs> well, that's great. Okay, so tell me what you guys are going to, what course of study you're pursuing for an undergrad. Okay, um, I think I'm going to go into something related to psychology. Okay. Uh, I'm majoring in biology. In order to be? Well, I want to be a vet right now, but okay. I'm not quite sure. But I really like science, so that's why. That's, good, that's a good uh, area to go in. I want to major in kinesiology so I can be a physical therapist. I was going to say sports medicine or <laughs> yeah. something like that. You'll always have a job because there's always injuries in athletics, so we know that. So... But before college starts, I'm sure you guys are going to be playing a little bit of club ball, right? Mm, yeah. So what club teams do you play for? Um, I'm going to be playing with the Monarchs based out of California. Okay. Yes. I'm playing with State 48. And is that a local team here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, State 48. Okay. I've never heard of them. Let's get those yeah. on. I'll it's give a, you, it's We're a new team. Well, I'll we give were. you my card. Give it to your coach. Let's get you guys on the, on the club show because June and July we do a lot of club softball okay. shows and stuff. I've got uh, – I've got three club teams already signed for June, so, so yeah, let's do that. Uh, and bring your California team over. To, to just come to the desert. It's 105. You know, you'll love it. So, let me ask you this, and then I have my own opinion, and there's no wrong answer. I just want to see where you guys are, are coming from. You guys play club ball. Now, club ball is to showcase yourself. It's a lot less about team and more about individual because even though you guys have already signed. You were playing club ball, so you can sign, you know, a scholarship to, you know, get your college paid for to take the burden off your parents. But would you rather? What's the What's the biggest club tournament? Isn't there one in like Chicago or something? It's only like a Nike tournament or I'd something. I'd say like PGA. PGA. Yeah. PGA. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Would you rather win that and and a medal or trophy or whatever goes with being a champion, or does it feel better to be a state champion and play for right here, Sabino? I couldn't say because I haven't won PGS yeah. yet. <laughs> but, I don't know. I feel like winning state is just cool because everyone, like, locally, it's, like, a big deal. You know what I mean? And, like, since we haven't won for, like, 15 years almost, that's a big deal to us. Sure. But then if you're winning PGF, it's, like, a national kind of thing. And sure. everyone gets to know that. So I think that's really special as well. I okay. Feel like they both have so you're kind of 50-50? Yeah. All right. I'd say probably winning state. I mean, 
we get a ring. It's pretty cool. We get a lot of recognition, and it's just a fun time. And nobody can ever take that away from you. Yeah. You've got, you know, you've got this. You know, like, yeah. hey, Saguaro Cougar, yeah. hey, Santa Rita Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, they're kind of both different, but I would probably say winning state. Okay. Um, I yeah. think, personally, I, I would rather win state. I asked the soccer girls last night, I said, would you rather win a World Cup or an Olympic gold medal? Because they're only every four years. And some interesting answers came back. They said, we'd rather win a World Cup because it's only soccer. When you have the Olympics, there's boxing, there's basketball, there's track and field, there's, you know, there's soccer. It, it, you know, there's a whole bunch of different sports. So it, I just kind of like to get the mindset of the athletes on, and there is no wrong answer. So that's great. Okay, so we know who your toughest game was in the state tournament. Who's uh, being now club team? Who's that team that you want to beat all the time? Your your rival in club. I feel like Suncats is always one of them. Suncats are a good organization. Yeah, they are. I know that Arizona recruits a lot from the Suncats, so and also from OC Badbusters. What about you? Um, yeah, Suncats. Suncats, yeah. okay. Yeah, they are a good organization, and they actually have been of our been on our show and a bunch of good athletes and stuff. So. So how are we doing on time, Mr. Producer? Okay. So let me ask you this. And I know school's over tomorrow, but you're going to go into a whole new venture in college. First of all, let me tell you this. Your four years in high school and your four years in college, those are the eight years. That is the best eight years of your life, swear to God. Because after that, life goes downhill. you got to get a job. You're going to start your own family. You have more responsibilities, and you're going to be doing what your parents have been doing for 18 years now. So you're on your parents' dime right now in four years in high school, four years in college. So enjoy it because life sucks after that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but no, it is it is the most fun, and, and you know, and you can never replicate your youth and stuff. I, I mean, life sucks, but you know what I mean. So, um, you know, just enjoy it. So, you know that getting good grades is not about staying eligible. You know, you guys wouldn't have signed scholarships if you were fringe, fringe academic uh, students. You know, no, no college is gonna, you know, take an eighty or a hundred thousand dollar scholarship and give it to a player that, man, I hope she passes this humanities class because if not, she's on the bench. You know, you have to be a stellar student. And then, and from everything that I've seen with Sabino, I've done your football team, your your boys and girls basketball team. Now I've got the softball team, and I think I even had your cheer squad on. Everybody seems to be a pretty good student that is an athlete or a part of athletics at Sabino High School. And that is a, that's a great thing to have, and it's also a credit to you guys, but also your administrators, Jay Campos, some of the other guys, your teachers, you know, and your coaches, because everybody has the same mindset you mesh, and you, you worry about the, the, the players that are the team that you're going to play instead of that math test in the back of your head because you've already passed the math test. That's a nice feeling. So, so let me ask you a couple funny questions, and then we'll uh, we'll give you a chance to shout out, and then we'll get the other girls up here. So, travel ball, you obviously travel, hence the name. Okay, if you travel, you're going to stop at gas stations because you can't go anywhere without gas. So, I want to know. I know you guys go inside QT and Circle K and all that. What is your favorite gas station food and drink? Um. I feel like QT, and we always get slushies there. Sure, yeah, they got like nine thousand different yeah. flavors. Yeah, and um, how to get food? I don't know. These like salsa verde chips, and they're really good. Are they <laughs> Doritos or no? They're oh. called salsa verde, like Tostitos okay. chips. Yeah. Okay. Really good. All right. I used to get them before practice. At the time. I haven't had that answer yet. We get a lot of Takis or hot Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Um, I'd probably say the QT slushies. We all three always get them together. And probably, you know, i got to go with Hot Cheetos. Okay. It's a classic. <laughs> Q, uh, QT slushies, though, is just like, it's like brain freeze, the first sip. You're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good about it. <laughs> um, slushies and then the little hot dogs, and then they have it wrapped in, like, all the way around. And then they have them on, like, the, the heater thingy. The, uh, you mean like the uh, little, yeah, they, like, the little, yeah, they, they put the yeah. little bread things around. Yeah, those are my favorite. They're good. So. Don't even add me right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good. Okay, so let me ask you this. I want you to think outside the box. Don't give me the obvious answer. And I want to. See, you guys are seniors, so I expect you to, I expect you to nail this one. So think outside the box. Okay. 
you're on a deserted island. You can bring three things. A person is a thing if you choose that. Oh, God. <laughs> um. I have my answer. Outside the box. I would bring Riley, Cassie, and Danielle, who's another senior that's not here. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you're going to have company. You're going to have company, fun on the island. I'd eat them. Okay. Eat arms. I'm going to bring something that will take me home because if I'm bringing something, I'm. Outside the box. There you go. And a boat, a plane. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to bring someone to entertain me. So I'm probably going to bring my friend Zaylee, who goes sure. to Mountain View. Okay. I'll probably bring her because she'd entertain me. All right. Just have a good time. <laughs> you took my idea. That was only two things. Yeah, but yeah, I don't need another thing because I'm going home. She's going home. <laughs> <laughs> you might eat food, though. Okay. Um, I would bring a private jet. So. And then <laughs> private jet. <laughs> not, 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 not these, you know, um, cheap fare, Sun Southwest Spirit Airlines. A private jet. And then um, <laughs> I would bring for entertainment. Oh, I can't bring all three of you guys. I'm sorry, I'd bring my dog. And you guys are out. The dog wins. Yeah. Ollie, really I can't bring Ollie. all three. I'm like, okay, so which one is she going to leave out? Be both of you got left out. Yeah. And then I'd bring some food. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Good. You wanted to get off the island. They're content to just spend the days on the island and grow old and whatever, you know. <laughs> okay. So here's your chance to shout out. Before we were doing the pre-show instructions, this is a nationwide broadcast. Also, uh, viewers out there, if you want to make comments to the players or coaches, ask questions or something, please take the take time, put it in the comment section, send it to us. Uh, Pearson will let me know if there's a there's a uh, question that comes up. So, so now's your chance to shout out. You got all 50 states to choose from. If you got somebody in uh, outside of Tucson or they're in Tucson, here's your chance. Um, I'd like to shout out to my brother and sister who are visiting me for my graduation, um, my grandparents who are here from Illinois as well, and my grandma and my aunt, uncle, and cousins, and just my best friend, Zaylee, like everyone who's watching me right now. Terrific. Terrific. Um, I'd like to shout out my parents who are right there, and then <laughs> my, my cousins and grandma and all those people that live in Tucson. And then my dad's side of the family, which lives in Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. Okay. All right. That's a big climate change. Yeah. It really right. is. Are they watching? No. Okay. Well, you <laughs> can tell I'm them after the know. show we publish it, and so they can go on the 520 Sports Talk Facebook page and actually watch it after the fact because we never take it off. I've done over 250 shows, and every single one of them is on there. Uh, I'd like to shout out to my parents. My mom is here. My dad's at home. Um, my family who's watching from California, and then my family is watching from Denmark. Um, Denmark, nice. Yeah, I'm Danish. Right. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm kind of Danish. Denmark out there. Hi, Denmark. Um, <laughs> and, then, um, and then all my friends. Shout out to all my friends who are watching. And cool. then a shout out to Danielle, who's not here right now, because, yeah. Okay. Do you okay, know this guy that. at all? No. <laughs> he's a freshman. He's, a, he's on the golf team. Yeah, really? yeah. Oh, you said I thought I'd seen you before. I said you yeah, familiar. my producer is a stud freshman. You got to be good to be a freshman or be on the varsity golf team. I mean, golf's a hard sport. It is. Yeah. It's a sport that I never took up. It was too yeah, hard. She does suck golf it. makes me cry. Yeah, golf makes me cry, and I'm a guy. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Congratulations you. on your uh, state championship, and best of luck in college and your club ball uh, season coming up. Thank you. All right, so while we're changing up uh, to the other – of the group, we have Oasis Air Conditioning and Heating. Make sure your units are in the tip-top shape by calling David Murrieta at 520-648-1755. New Stitch Embroidery, just located just north of Pueblo High School at 3114 South 12th Avenue. For all your silk screening, embroidery, and fabric laser printing, and they do do our shirts. I've got an old logo. Pearson's got the new logo. Uh, definitely check out New Stitch Embroidery. They do a lot of stuff for Tucson Youth Football, a lot of stuff for Pueblo High School and other TUSD schools. Check them out, 520-741-1070, or you can go to newstitch.net. That's not .com, .net. And I want to welcome aboard. This is our brand-new sponsor, but this place has been in business since 1962. Okay, and if you have ever had a chili dog in Tucson, You've probably gone to Pat's Chili Dogs over at Niagara and Grande over on the Tucson's west side. The best chili dogs in the world, okay? So Charlie and Dane, we, we, I told them that we would say 
congratulations to their two grandsons who graduated uh, on Thursday. And it's Isaiah Guevara and Carlos Miranda from Tucson High and from Amphi High School. So congratulations, guys. Job well done. High school's over. Get used to college. You're still in that eight-year window where life is fun before you have to get a real job. So congratulations. Pat's Chili Dogs, go check them out. Seriously, you will not you will not be disappointed. Niagara and Grande, right in the heart of Barrio Hollywood. Hi, ladies. How are you? All right. How does it feel to be a state champion? It feels amazing. Okay. So before we start, I want to know who you guys are. So give me your name. Uh, and what? since you're not seniors, give me the year, what year you are, at least for one more day. And what position do you play? Um, I'm Lexi Bice. I'm a junior, and I play the outfield. All right. Um, I'm Madison Foma Moreno, and I'm a freshman. Right. I'm Sydney Gray, and I'm a junior and play shortstop. I'm Sam Marstow, and I'm a junior, and I play outfield. All right. Do you know these people? Um, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of and you know what? He wasn't even going to work this show, and then I told him, it's going to be Sabino. And he goes, I'm working this show. So, <laughs> so we like to have the Sabino people here. Okay, so tell me the difference in how you felt in the moment when you guys were dogpiling on the, on, the, on the mound of realizing you were a state champion, and now that it's been a week or so, two weeks since you've won it, how does, how does that differ? Um, I guess it's kind of surreal. Um, like in the moment, you're kind of like, oh my god, this just happened. And then in the past couple weeks, I kind of forgot, but then I think about it and I'm like, oh my gosh, like we one state. That kind of thing. Um, in the moment, it didn't feel real. And if I still think about it now, it still doesn't feel real. <laughs> it still hasn't sunk in. That's cool. That's cool. Um, in the moment, it was pretty amazing. Like it was just like, wow, we just did that and worked all season long to do that, and now here we are piling on top of each other, holding this huge trophy that we get to bring back to our school, and that was amazing. And now, like she said, I kind of forget about it, but every now and then I think, and I'm like, wow, I'm gonna get a ring, and like I'm a state champ, and like this happened. Not many people get to do this, so that was really amazing. I bet. Um, in the moment, it was kind of, like, unbelievable, and, um, like, looking back at it now, like, now I believe that we actually did it. Right. So it's, it's kind of sunk in. Though. Yeah. All right. The ring. The ring is, the ring is yeah. it. The ring yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> when I was like, you won. I was like, yeah. I want a ring. Nobody <laughs> takes that ring away. And I was talking to the seniors. I'm like, you're walking down the street in QT, and you see a couple of eagles or cougars or titans or. Yeah. <laughs> right here, baby. Right, that's that's so neat because you can now you can talk smack because you're a state champion. That's great. Okay, so you guys are all coming back next year. Um, I don't think Sabino rebuilds. I think they just reload. Uh, coaches were saying that you guys got a lot of underclassmen that are coming up from the JV ranks that are just going to fit right in, and uh, we're going to try to go for a repeat. I mean, Benson did it. Sienega uh, did it. Sarita tried to do it, but. Uh, Fell a little bit short, but I mean, they still have their ring. So um, I felt bad for the Benson kids because they were three outs away from three peating. But, uh, you know, it happens, and that's why you play till the last out. And congratulations to Camp Verde. So, so tell me, during the regular season, who's your biggest rival? Whether it's non conference, it's uh, maybe a, a 4A, 4A or 5A, maybe a Saguaro or something. And then in 3A, who's your biggest rival? I don't know. I guess I mean, has got to be one yeah, of them. It's Saguaro's a pride of the East of side. Because like, Santa Rita's got three whole, people that go to yeah, school there, so they whole, don't even. <laughs> and our whole school is, like, against Saguaro, obviously, because right. we're rivals. So, like, that right. was a huge game that we wanted to beat. And I would say for 3A, Sarita was one of our biggest sure. rivals because we've always we always go back and forth, and like they won last year, right. so like we wanted to come back at them. So our first game was really good. Fell short in the second mm -hmm. time we played them, but it, they're always a good team. They're and a quality we, team with a quality coach. Yeah. Coach Fanning's a great coach. We had yeah. them on the show at Frog and Furk and mm -hmm. good bunch of kids and stuff. Do you guys play club ball with them? 
Um, yeah, I play club ball with a few of them, yeah. and I know a few of them from the other girls on my team that play with them. Uh -huh. So, yeah. That's kind of the nice thing uh, about once school ball is over, you go club ball, and you can play with 4A, 5A, 6A yeah. players. But you can also play with your Katie Shermans from 2A that are just as good as yeah. a, a 6A Phoenix or Tucson team. So, yeah. And what about you? Biggest rival in non-conference and biggest rival in conference? Um, I think one of our, I don't want to say rival, but like a really big game for us was Sienega. Okay, sure. good. Um, yep, yeah. Eric Tatham's a good coach. Yeah. I don't know about non-conference. CDO, oh, the yeah. legend, Kelly Fowler. I mean, how many people has she put into D1? Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's amazing. You play on the Royals? Desert or Desert Thunder. Thunder. That's right, Desert Thunder, yeah. yeah. We, haven't, like, we never actually played them before this season, uh -huh. so when we played them, it was such a great game. And oh, we she's ended up winning, and fantastic it was coach. amazing for us because we should – like, we were not right. supposed to do that. Yeah, I mean, if you ever go to CDO softball field, I mean, just look at the names on the outfield fence and stuff. It's just, it's like an all-star team. So, yeah, that's that's great. So, let me, yeah, I'm going to ask you the same question as I asked you the seniors. Would you rather win the most prestigious club tournament, which is the one in California, the P, some or other, PVF, yeah. Or would you rather win a state championship? Which you have, I mean, which would you think would mean more? I think. I think state championship would mean more only because you represent your school that way. Right, right. So I think, I mean, club, winning it for the club would be, like, awesome because that's a, that's a really big experience. And, mm -hmm. But I think, I think coming back to your school and representing your school with state championship means a lot more for the whole school in itself than just your club team. Right, exactly. I'm a club team. You have friends. You, you create new relationships. But... You, the, the kids you go to school with, you probably grew up with and went to elementary and Emily Gray and all, you know, you've, all, you've been known each other all your whole lives. Anyone else? Um, I kind of feel the same way. Like, winning state for our school and bringing back, like, the title and everything is so fun. And you're, like, around all your friends and you come back and they congratulate you and it's just, like, amazing. And we hadn't done it in so long, so... I would rather. I didn't realize it was state. 15 years. I think the seniors said something like yeah. 15 yeah. Mm -hmm. years. That's that's terrific. Yeah, and when you, winning PGF like that's super cool. But like, no one at your school that you go to every day really like knows how much that like sure. means. So like, winning state is kind of more cool. Okay, <laughs> you guys agree with that? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Now you're state champions and the boys baseball team state champions. So, do you guys like talk to each other a little smack back and forth, or or how, how does that go? I don't think so. Yeah. I think I think we're all supportive of each other. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I don't think we talk smack. I think it, we thought it was really cool that both of us won. Mm -hmm. So. Well, especially since the boys got ripped off yeah. last year. That was that was yeah. just a crime. I mean, that's. It's funny. The Phoenix schools can openly recruit and yeah. and do prior contact and all that, and they kind of just turn another turn the other way. But Tucson yeah. does it, and they they lower the boom. I mean, I felt really really bad for. Uh, for Coach Rhodes and the girls' basketball team oh this year. Gosh, it's like, you know, yeah. let them get to the semifinals and then take the carpet out from under them. Just unreal. So you guys are, well, you're a freshman, but you may have thought about this already. Um, you got one more, two-year, three-year left in high school. Do you guys all want to play college ball, whether it's junior college, D2, 3, 1? You know, or do you want to concentrate on academics? Um. I think it depends, I guess, scholarship-wise. I do, as I get older, like in high school, I love the game more. Sure. So every year it just gets better and better. It makes me want to play. So I guess, yeah. Okay. Any particular dream school you have a play in softball? I've always really liked Oregon softball. Oregon, okay. But that's like a D1, so sure. it's hard. <laughs> hey. Um, I think I want to play college ball, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what's your dream school? I mean, you can even I'm a team up with, with Rebecca Quiroz. I mean, she's got a great team. Um, I think my dream school is Texas A&M. Okay, the Aggies? Yeah. All right. Um, right now I'm committed to University of Nebraska, actually. So okay. I thought one. with the blonde hair you made UCLA or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> no, yeah. All right, good. Um, I haven't really decided on a major yet, so depending on how far I want to go in my major will determine if I want to play. But sure, that as, makes sense. As far as right now, I would like to play, but it'll just, we'll just see how it goes. You know, and, and to all of you, an academic scholarship is just as much, you know, just as, 
you know, worth it as an, a an athletic scholarship. I mean, the thing is, is your parents have worked hard for your 18 years. Well, when you're 18 and you get out of high school, you know, take the burden off of them. You know, if you can get an academic scholarship, get it. If you can get an athletic scholarship, either one's going to give you a free ride in school. You know, and at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to play softball at a certain point when you get to a certain age. So that academics is going to have to kick in uh, when you go out and, and, you know, and get yourself, quote, unquote, a, a real job. So so the nice thing about softball now that they didn't wasn't around like when I was in school was there's a professional women's softball league now. Uh, there's a lot of uh, girls from UCLA, from Arizona, from A-State, Oregon, you know, that, that have played or are playing in the women's fast pitch uh, pro league. And, and they're getting paid. They don't get paid as much as, you know, major league baseball guy, but it's not like it used to be when it first started where you're making, you know, a dollar fifty eight a game or something like that. So, so I mean, that's also something that you can pursue even after college. It's like, hey, am I good enough to play pro, you know? And, you know, you can play for however many years, you know, you want, uh, whether it's a short career or a long career, you know, and, and it's still an avenue of opportunity that women uh, did not have, uh, you know, a few years back. So that, that's something to think about as well. How are we doing on time? Funny question from the producer. Okay. All right, so I asked the first group what their favorite gas station food and drink was because you, you're you in travel ball, and they all, they all go to QT for slushies apparently. But um, I'm going to ask you a food question because I know high schoolers, you like to eat, you know. You don't have to worry about your weight, you know. You just, you know, just your metabolism. So, so give me your two favorite fast food or two favorite places to eat if it's not fast food. And you got to get rid of one the rest of your life. And hopefully it's not one of our sponsors. I think my favorite fast food would be like Chick-fil-A. Sure. Okay. And the other one, I used to love Subway. But we but now had that it, you've tried Chiba Hut? We had it at, <laughs> at least five times in the entire state tournament. So I'd probably get rid of Subway. Okay. All right. That's a good choice, by the way. Um, I think my favorite fast food restaurant is Cane's. Cane's, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't get it. I mean, their chicken's good, but that's all they have. I mean, I, I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll take Lucky Wishbone garlic bread over there. <laughs> and then I probably would get rid of Subway, too. Subway, yeah. okay. Good choice. <laughs> um, my favorite fast food is probably Chick-fil-A. Okay. Wait, do we have to do two or just well, one? Well, no, you do two and you get rid of one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get rid of Subway. Subway? Yeah. Okay. We eat it way too much. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you can eat it at all. Go ahead. Um, geez, I don't know my favorite fast food restaurant is. Probably, probably Chick-fil-A, I guess. Um, I would definitely get rid of McDonald's. Okay. Except for the fries. Uh, <laughs> do you guys all eat lunch together at Chick-fil-A or something? Or, or at Subway? <laughs> All right, great. No wrong answers, just kind of a, a fun question. I'll give, give you one more. Would you rather be a dragon, own a dragon, or slay a dragon? And why? I want to own a dragon so I can okay. ride it. And, sure. like, that's super cool. <laughs> Way cool. <laughs> um, I think I'd own a dragon, too, because <laughs> you can ride it. And you can brag about that you have a dragon. Yeah. Well, you know what? You guys are you guys are still coming back to Sabino, so can, I can see you guys and your dragon coming into student parking. I'm like, get the heck out of the way, move your car. My dragon's parking here. Oh, you don't want to move your car? Fire, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think own a dragon. Okay. I don't know. I just think it would be really cool, and like she said, you could probably brag about it. Sure. All the time, so. Look at all the guys. Hey, man, you own a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'd probably say own a dragon because, um, I don't know, you're like more powerful. <laughs> more powerful. Is this the last group or we have one more? Okay. I'll ask you an extra question. Okay. So that being said on the dragon, if you could have, if you could be any animal, whether it's a uh, flying in the air, on land or in the lakes or oceans, what would you be? I would be a sloth. I had somebody say that last night, and I didn't get it. You move like eight inches a year. They're so cute, though. Well, you take a lot of naps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, I think I'd be a giraffe. Okay. 
Just be able to see over everything, you know? Yeah. All right. Um, I think I'd be a cheetah because, like, you can be so fast and you're, like, awesome. <laughs> Are you a base stealer? Yes. <laughs> Hence the cheetah. Um, I think I'd be a monkey. I don't know. Okay. I feel like it fits my personality. A- any particular one? Or a spider monkey? or? I don't know. They're just so smart, I guess. and they Sure. They have human features, so. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. All right, good answers. Okay, and like I spoke to you before on the pre-game, uh, pre-show, pre-game, pre-show instructions, um, this is a nationwide broadcast, worldwide, even if you have, like, military family or something. Um, here's your chance to shout out to anybody, whether they're in Tucson or outside of the city or the state. Go for it. Um, I guess I just want to shout out to my all my family in Ohio because I know they're watching. <laughs> what part of Ohio? Uh, Cleveland. Oh, okay. Yeah. By the lake. Yes. <laughs> I lived in southern. I lived in the Detroit area, and then I lived over in Kalamazoo. So oh, really? I know what lake effect snow is. It's not <laughs> yes, fun. No, it's not. <laughs> um, I'll shout out my dad because I don't get to see him that often. Okay. But I know he's always watching. Is he here in town? Uh, no, he's a truck driver, so he's never Oh, here. okay, so he's all around. Yeah. Well, the I, nice thing about Facebook is, is if he doesn't catch this live, we will publish it after the show, so not only he can see it, but you guys can go watch yourselves on, on the show, and you know with technology, every smart TV now has a Facebook app, so just log in, buy Teal Sports Talk in the search bar, and voila, there's your show. Yeah. And it stays on there forever. So when you're 35 and you go like, look at me as a junior. <laughs> you and I got the cool mics. These are these are like German mics. These are good. Um, Those are Kmart mics. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I guess I'll shout out my mom. Okay. <laughs> Short and sweet. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Um, just shout out to my family and friends. They're yeah. all here? Uh, like in Tucson? Yeah. Well, my mom and sister are right here. Okay. My family, my, some of my family's in Colorado. What part? Denver. Okay. Did you tell them that we were going to be on? No. Well, I told you guys did. to tweet and Instagram <laughs> Maybe and Snapchat. Maybe my mom did. Oh, okay. So if they're watching, shout and out if to they, you. <laughs> and, if they, and if you're not watching live, you can watch it after we publish it. You can yes. go home and tell them it's like, you missed a great show, but you have a chance to watch it. Yes. Oh, you already went. <laughs> You're not your dog or cat or anything like that? Okay. All right. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys. You guys are tremendous. Uh, I'm honored to have you as guests. And uh, congratulations on being state champs. With you guys, unlike the seniors, you can come back and go for the repeat. So that would be good. And Sabino, remember, we don't rebuild. We just reload. So congratulations very much. And good luck in your club and travel ball and stuff. Remember, play up. You guys are what, 16? Play like 20U or 18U or so, you know, get used to the speed, and believe me, uh, it'll help you out. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. So let's go quick wrap of our sponsors here. Simply Noted, mixing modern marketing techniques with an old-school personal touch. Expand your business footprint by going to simplynoted.com. This is owned by ex-Wildcat football great Ricky Elmore, who played not only at the U of A, but also in the NFL. Tucson Speedway, some of my favorite people. We have the NASCAR show here uh, usually once a month or once every other month. Uh, we were going to have one earlier in the month, and uh, there was just uh, not enough time to put it together. They had a race coming up, and we certainly don't want to get in the way of their uh, their competition and their racing. So we are going to have a NASCAR show uh, up here very soon in June. Remember that they are our sponsors, and we're going to have a 520 Sports Talk race at Tucson Speedway. The proceeds will go to the Tucson Fire Foundation, uh, which is my favorite charity. So uh, just check it out. Fast and Furious Excitement is right just south of the fairground, so easy to get to right off the 10 freeway. The, the season's already started, so go to TucsonSpeedway.com for the racing information. And also our second newest sponsor, just got them today, Arizona Motor Vehicle Express, okay? This is up in the Marana area, just north of Costco on Thornydale. Believe me, I've used these guys three times. I, nobody likes to go to the DMV. It's a nightmare. You're there for two, three, four hours, whatever you need to get done. I walked into Arizona Motor Vehicle Express today. 
the place was packed. There was 20 people in line. And I'll tell you, in 20 minutes, they were all taken care of. So even if you're... Even if you walk in there, there's a big crowd. It's not as big as at the DMV, and you're going to get taken care of. Uh, you can get your title and registration, driver's license now, your road test, instructional permits for your kids that are start learning how to drive, voluntary travel ID, photo updates, 30, 60, three-day day permits. You can get personalized plates there, uh, motor vehicle records, uh, disability placards. So go to this place don't go to the state don't go to the dmv and just waste your day go to arizona motor vehicle express you can get a hold of them at 520-219-8852 so thank you very much they're open from 9 to 5 30 monday through friday and their saturday hours are 9 to 3 so thank you for hopping on board and the one thing about our sponsors is yes we help them uh gain new customers and new business but also, they do it because they are involved in youth sports in high school, in the sports that we cover here at 520 Sports Talk that don't get the major media attention. The U of A girls and women's team, Pima College, high school club teams, whether it's softball, volleyball, soccer, Tucson Youth Football, uh, Tucson Speedway. All these things you don't see Channel 4, 9, and 13 at very often unless it's a big event. And we cover them week in and week out. And that's why our sponsors hop on board, because of the fact that they want their name associated with youth, youth sports coverage in southern Arizona and also be a part of the 520 Sports Talk family. So thank you very much. Uh, just a quick note, we are going to be launching 602 Sports Talk up in Phoenix very soon. Uh, Bobby Pena, who heads USA Softball for Arizona, we're going to have him on our first show. We're going to have... Uh, some of the, we're going to have the 6A champion Sandra Day O'Connor team on. We're going to have a lot of club teams on from Phoenix. So, Tucson, you've got your chance to get your club team on in June and July. I've already scheduled five club teams. Uh, there's still a lot of room. We're going to probably do three or four shows a week if possible. So get your club team on. It also helps you with fundraising. We will help you with fundraising, not only going out and doing a live remote at your fundraising event, but we will also ask our sponsors to contribute to your club organizations. We are right now we're helping the team that we had on last night, the 04 Tucson, FC Tucson Black Soccer Team. 520 Sports Talk is personally going to help them get their championship rings. So if you want help with your club fundraisers, your club softball, or any other club sports you have, fundraisers, let's get them on the show, and we will be more than happy to help you in any fundraising that you can have. You can get us a hold of us at 520sportstalk at gmail.com. That's 520sportstalk, all run together, at gmail.com. I look forward to opening up my email tomorrow and seeing a bunch of request to get on the show so right now i mean i want the scramblers on the show i mean louie and bruno come on man let's get your scrambler team on the show uh we've never been on there i know uh, the roadrunners are going to be back i already talked to bob and he's stoked about it uh, there's just going to be there's a lot of uh things going on in the summer and we don't want to interrupt uh you know your tournaments and, and your practice schedule so much but we will accommodate you on the show and we may even start the show earlier or later depending on what your practice is. Phoenix is geeked up. Phoenix wants to have 602 Sports Talk so bad they can taste it. Um, I've had over 80 teams contact me that want to be guests. I mean, that's almost a year full of, of teams on our show. So, Tucson, if you don't want to be passed up by Phoenix, get on 520sportstalk at gmail.com and send me uh, information, and we'll get your team and your organization on our show. So thank you very much, our sponsors. Thank you to the Sabino Sabercats, 3A state champions. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you, Pearson Sturdivant, for being my producer. 520 Sports Talk, Southern Arizona Sports, with a twist. It's a wrap.